impartation from the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to receive the very power of the Holy Spirit that through the love of God you're going to experience signs, miracles, and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So tonight, as we are moving forward, remember that prayer is all about traveling. We must learn to travel in prayer. We worship God in truth and in spirit. So for us to be able to move forth in the realms of prayer, you have to learn to put down the flesh and travel in the spirit. Why do we travel in the spirit? Because whatever we want, whatever we need is in the realm of the spirit and therefore we have to travel we have to allow our spirits to travel into the realm of the spirit so that we can negotiate so that we can put forth our case before the throne and that we may bargain we may bargain for systems we may bargain for territories we may bargain for regions we may bargain for nations hallelujah so there is a, a jurisdictional authority that god has given you and whatever place you are wherever you are no matter what's happening you have to learn to take personal responsibility over your relationship with god you have to open up your mouth in the age and the church age this church age the holy spirit came upon the apostles and they began to speak in other tongues they were given utterance by the Spirit. In just in the previous chapter, we see Peter denying Jesus three times. But immediately the Spirit of God came into him. It was a different story. They did one of the greatest crusades and more than 3,000 people got saved. So I thank God and I bless God by the power of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ that tonight we are going deeper and deeper. Prayer is traveling. We don't just approach the throne of God like that. Hallelujah. There is a way that uh, we must approach the kingdom of God. God has set up a system of which he may be approached. Hallelujah. And in that system is right there laid out for us in the Bible. And one of the greatest ways of watching the system of prayer is the tabernacle of God. In the way it was constructed, every piece of furniture in the tabernacle meant something. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, you need to understand that the present altar needed something. The present altar signified an altar of sacrifice where there was the blood that was shed. There was the shedding of blood, the sacrificing of a goat. And upon the cross, the ultimate lamb was sacrificed. Hallelujah. And that was to change our lives, to redeem us. Hallelujah. And now, my God, we saw after they sacrificed, the priest would go into the level of washing and wash their hands and wash their feet, which signified clean hands, pure hands, to be able to approach the Lord. And we saw about thanksgiving, the prayer of praise and worship. Tonight, we are going deeper because now we have moved from the labor of worship. We are now on the center section of the tabernacle, which is the holy place before we go into the most holy place. So there will be teachings on this about the lampstand. There will be teachings about this part of the tabernacle, the holy place in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank God and I bless God by the power of the Spirit of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. By the fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank God and I bless God by the power of the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are tonight, you're going to receive tongues. If you can't, if you're a Christian and you can't speak tongues, you're going to receive it online. You'll be shocked at what God can do in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer is something that we say prayer is so important in your life. Prayer is so important. Prayer is the only way and the only channel by which we can connect to God. There is no way you can pray. Hallelujah. There is no way you can live a successful life 
without prayer hallelujah and that is why every man must get deeper and deeper in the realms of prayer prayer is so important you move things you change climates you change spheres using prayer hallelujah that's why you find a man who does not pray even if you're born again and you do not pray you encounter so many problems the problems you find the problems that came into your life or rather the problems that you had the habits that you had before you got born again still follow you in your salvation 10 years later 20 years later you still find yourself doing the same thing why because you have disconnected from the realms of prayer it's very important for you to you know to enter and keep in prayer prayer is the shield that covers you prayer is you know is it's is like something that builds a ball of fire the bible says that god creates his angels as the wind and the servants of god as a ball as or rather as fire hallelujah so wherever you are you need to understand that some of the weaknesses some of the demons that have been affecting you before are still affecting you in your salvation why because you haven't understood the realms of prayer you haven't moved in the grace of prayer hallelujah and this is the reason why because you see forgiveness is only found in the church in the kingdom of god hallelujah in the devil's kingdom there's no such things as forgiveness so a demon that walked out of you when you got saved when you were delivered at that time hallelujah has gone away very bitter because there is an ordinance that the lord placed that the only way a spirit can enter the realms of the earth is only through a body so when you cast them out they go bitter that's why during deliverance you see people screaming people shouting those demons know they are going to a dry place and when they go to that dry place they can never forgive you so 10 years down down the line they come back to check the house that was swept if it was swept how how clean was it is it still clean and then it goes out and gets another seven spirits to come and dwell in that realm so prayer is something that you must keep doing without prayer you find yourself roaming two different altars yet you have the ability to change your situation to change what you're going through through prayer hallelujah hallelujah so there's no you see there 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 are some places and there are some realms that you cannot access through man but there are realms that you can access only through prayer and that's why prayer is going beyond the flesh is going beyond the flesh going in the spirit because you see we said that you go out and give to god and there's something that comes back to you it comes back to you in the form of his glory in the form of his power in the form of his honor hallelujah Hallelujah. I bless God and I glorify God tonight. Hallelujah. So you must be a man of prayer. Wherever you are, prayer is so important. You must learn to access the realms of the Spirit wherever you are by the power of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus Christ was in the wilderness, he was in a time of temptation. There was a lot that was happening to him there. He turned to the realms of prayer and he overcame. He turned that wilderness into a beautiful grace. And when he came out, he said, bring the book of Isaiah. In Luke 4:18, and he said, bring the book of Isaiah. And what did he say? He said, I have been anointed the gospel to the poor to open the eyes of the blind to lead them free who have been held captive so prayer is a realm and a dimension that changes things we see so many so many things in the bible examples of how prayer changed lives look at hezekiah the king a prophet walked in with a message of death this man was supposed to die and his time of death had appeared and the major prophet walks in hallelujah and gives him the word of god and tells him your time is up you're gonna die mm. my god my god 
my God. What did King Hezekiah do? He turned into the realms of prayer. And because he knew the system, he changed and manipulated the, the climate or the environment at that time. And these are hidden mysteries that are there in the Bible, which you as a child of God can use today. You can change the dimension of things. You can change and manipulate systems through following the system that God had laid down. That's why, you see, we don't just jump into tongues. Where is it that you go to God impure? You have to go through the brazen altar. So Hezekiah turned and faced the wall. And when he turned and faced the wall, something happened. He changed that prophetic word and God met the prophet at the door and told him, go back. I have changed my word. <laughs> Amazing. But what happened? This man moved in dimensions of prayer. He understood the systems of prayer. And what if you watch what he exactly he did, he claimed something in the realm of the spirit and he reminded God. So there are times when you cry to God. There are times when you, you know, when you remind God. Mala proskete prekida suvej. Lekata sutrekedos. You see, when you look at the Bible, there are different systems. Before we begin, it's important to mention this, that there were different prayer expressions that appeared in the Bible. There are those who agreed together. So there's a prayer where you need to agree together with a group of people. You don't be alone. There's a prayer where you bow and you kneel before God. There's a prayer where you face the wall. Daniel faced the wall in the face of death. There is a prayer which involves falling down. There is a prayer which involves fasting. My God, somebody needs to be listening to this tonight. It's going to change dimensions. These are all ways in which people prayed in the Bible. Ways in which people prayed. There are those who looked up. My God, when the battle was, was raging, and Moses was beginning to get tired. Anytime his hands went down, Israel was losing. But when they carried up his hands, the war raged and they were beginning to be successful. But there was a system by which they did this. They made him to sit down on a stone. Who was the stone in that time and in this time? The stone was the stone that the builders rejected. So the stone signified Jesus Christ, who becomes the rock of ages. So there are those who said amen to others' prayers. There are those who went in, like David, he went in sackcloth and ashes. There are those who prayed in oneness, in unity, like in the time of Esther, when the Jews came together and fasted three days and three nights. So prayer is something that you learn. You don't just utter in the realms of the Spirit. You must begin to learn from the Bible and emulate exactly what those people were doing. There are those who prayed alone. Jesus also, there were times when he went and prayed alone. There are those who prayed in a bedroom like Daniel. Times when you lock yourself in the closet. Oh my God. There are those who prayed on a boat. <laughs> there are those who prayed on a brook. There are those who prayed on a chariot. There are those who prayed on a, in a grave. There's a man who prayed in a dungeon. There are those who prayed in the temple. There are those who sat by a table and prayed. There are those who prayed in the upper room. There are those who prayed in the synagogue. There is a man who prayed inside the belly of a whale. Lekaradus. So there are times in life when something seems to have swallowed you up. There is an issue that is swallowing you up. The prayer you make is like the prayer of Jonah. You're about to lose your job. You are swallowed up in issues. You make the prayer and you will be delivered at the right destination. Oh my God. There are those who prayed with stones, by stones. There are those who prayed by the riverside. The man who lost the axe head, he said, Alas, master. <laughs> Elisha played, prayed by the riverside. There is a man who prayed by the pillars and that was Samson. And the prayer that he made broke the pillars, they broke the pillars. There are those who prayed by the garden. 
the garden of Gethsemane there are those who prayed inside fire in a furnace so all these are not just stories God is speaking to you that there are situations that will come in your life look at what the inspired word of God says on certain situations and how people prayed there's somebody there's a man who prayed at the well mm, 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 mm. and when he prayed at the well Isaac got a wife Rachel appeared my God there are those who prayed in a den like Daniel so there are so many ways in which you can go and get encounters with God and prayer is a dimension every Christian must partake of prayer is so important that you know if you want to change systems if you want to change the season of your life it is only by prayer that thing that you're going through can be changed by prayer you do not now need to believe that another man is gonna pray for you and things will open yes it can happen but if you want prophetic speed if you want to learn how to roam like a general you need to learn how to pray prayer is it's not something that we learn on a classroom prayer is learned on your knees can i say that again prayer is not learned in a classroom prayer is learned on your knees oh my god Oh my God. So this season when we are talking about the tabernacle of God, it's a time for you to understand that we are restoring the altar of God. We, are, we as Christians must break a pattern of falsehood, pretenses on the altar. People just standing to make money from others. We need to break that in the name of Jesus Christ. And let every Christian in this nation, Kaya Badoske Lebrahaso, stand as a child of God and understand what is true salvation. There are those who have prayed themselves into oblivion. Prayed themselves. You can pray yourself into hell by praying amiss, praying wrong things, praying prayers that are soulish, prayers that are designed to bring down your brother, to bring down your sister. Oh my God, Masha Kedir. So tonight, it's gonna to be powerful. Tonight, just hang on with me. Tonight, there's so many things that we need to do. The Lord is here to awaken you. The Spirit of God is here to develop you, to strengthen you. Are you hearing me? so that your life may be rooted and grounded in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's time for you to restore the altar of your family. Many families are not praying. It's time for you to stand up together in your marriage, in that relationship that you are, in your family, and begin to rise up in prayer. Remember, forgiveness is only in the realms of the church. Forgiveness does not exist in the realms of the devil. They will never forgive you for casting them out. Oh my God. So they will go and relax, have, have trouble wherever they are in the dry place, and they will come back. The only way you can stop this and move in great dimensions is by entering into the realms of prayer. And therefore prayer becomes a journey. Prayer is traveling, traveling in the realms of the spirit to negotiate for dimensions, to negotiate for your, you know, your, your environment, your people, to negotiate for nations. So prayer is not just something that you just go and do men stood in the bible and changed dimensions changed their seasons hallelujah they changed their seasons mm. my god so there are dimensions of prayer and gifts that you cannot receive from a man the gifts of the spirit are given by the holy spirit according to his will and one of the gifts is discernment of spirits that discernment of spirits, you can never receive it without entering into the realms of prayer. My God, Lekata Sudesh. So wherever you are, let me the Lord make you a house of prayer.
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you just need to pray and I can give two minutes just two minutes begin to pray in tongues wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Spirit of God is going to take over in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord will make your house of prayer the righteous shall call out to him in prayer May the Lord give you righteousness. All things are possible with him. All things are possible with him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we are breaking. That demon that has held you. That demon that has stopped you from praying. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to pray after today. Your spirit will be open for prayer. Your spirit will be open to receive the glory to receive the power, to receive the honor, to receive the wisdom of God. Mm. Because that is what he gives to us anytime when we go down to kneel down in prayer. There will come a time when you begin to pray, when you enter in the realms of prayer. You change seasons, you change dimensions. Oh my God, I know of a man who saved an entire company through prayer. Things begin to become hard for the, 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 the workplace. Things are not moving in the workplace. And yet that is the place where you get your bread from. That is the place where you get your daily bread. That's the place where you get your salary. But things are hard and you're not at the senior levels. You're not at the managerial positions. You can be at a supervisory level. But from that place, you can change dimensions and restore your job and restore the job of the entire company. Who said? They can say within 40 days, we'll declare this company bankrupt. It depends on how you see things. In that 40 days, as they are winding up, they are doing documents and, 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 and the company is being declared bankrupt. In those 40 days, you can take a scripture for every day of the 40 days and enter into the realms of prayer. The more somebody desires, the more the company rivals want to fight the company, the more you are standing in the gap, the more you are building the foundations while others are thinking they are breaking you you're building the foundations through the realms of prayer prayer is essential my god are you sick and maybe the doctor has declared that in 10 days you're going to be dead now refuse change the climate change the system hezekiah did it he turned and faced the wall so when you learn the systems, when you learn what systems God has placed on the earth for you to be able to pray, then you'll be able to move supernaturally. You'll be able to shift things, to change the climate that is going on around your life. You can ignite a revival in your family. You can ignite a revival in your community. You can ignite that revival. Marosh elebregidos. You can ignite that revival in your city. You can invite it in the nation of Kenya. My God. So prayer is a system. You need to learn how did God lay it out. I'm showing you one of the greatest systems of prayer. The tabernacle of God. Where each piece of furniture was strategically placed at the present altar. The brass or the copper. The, the shitty mood was surrounded with copper. But now we've moved from that level. We've entered into the level of worship. And now we have left the outer court. We are inside now. At the holy place at the holy place is no longer copper at the holy place it is systems are all of gold mm, 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 mm. exodus chapter 25 verse 31 in the mighty name of jesus christ the grace of god is going to touch somebody tonight the book of exodus chapter 25 from verse 31 exodus chapter 25 from verse 
31. The glory of God is going to touch somebody tonight in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power of God is going to touch your prayer life tonight. I'm going to be teaching something. Bear with me. I'm going to be teaching something very powerful tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 25 from verse 31. The Bible says, And you shall make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work that shall the candlestick be made his shaft and his branches and his bowls and his knobs and his flowers shall be of the same now you have noticed the tense and notice the language that is being spoken here it's not it but his meaning the tabernacle as god was building it he had a vision about the tabernacle and that tabernacle would be alive and that tabernacle para shovedia, is what he would give its name to you who's watching me you are the temple of god and that's why god is speaking in this manner and he said in that tabernacle it shall make a candlestick of pure gold so it's no longer copper now it is gold anything that you see is gold in the tabernacle involves the things of the spirit involves the holy spirit so you see copper cannot represent the holy spirit but gold does so the candlestick hallelujah was made of pure gold and of beaten work this candlestick was made and it says number one his shaft number two his branches number three his bowls number four his knobs number five his flowers so there are five things that are placed on this candlestick hallelujah and they shall be of the same meaning there will be no differences after the resurrection the way will be one and therefore God had to be consistent my God look at what the Bible is saying and six branches shall come out of the sides of it three branches of the lampstand out on one side and three branches of the lampstand out on the other side i'll be explaining that shortly three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower so in the six branches that come out of the lampstand meaning there will be three on either side with the representing the candlestick at the center what represents the spirit of god or the holy spirit so you see as god was dividing this for the seven spirits of god the candlestick or the lampstand was supposed to give off light inside the holy place and this light that it would give off there would no other item or piece of furniture in the holy place that would give off light it had to be only one light so the seven spirits of god available at this time represented it represented the power of the lord jesus christ who is the light <laughs> of the world he is the light that was given unto you according to the book of john chapter one so it was the only source of light that would appear and it came from where not the flesh but the spirit so when things turn from gold from brass or copper to gold it means you're moving from the flesh into the spiritual realm you are accessing levels my god and that's why you find that sometimes when you pray you feel like nothing has happened because you haven't understood the systems laid down for prayer there are areas of access which you cannot access in the flesh you have to travel in the spirit prayer is traveling prayer is traveling and the bible says i'm reading it here as i go on my god my god and in the lampstand shall be four bowls made unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers so the story goes on and on but i want to uh jump to verse 37 and the bible says and you shall make seven lamps here mm. and they shall light the lamps thereof so the lamps that were placed on top were seven of them and they would give off light that's why in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 says uh, uh, it says may the spirit of God be upon me the spirit of wisdom 
and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Seven in number. Those are the seven spirits of God. So you find as we as I proceed in the teaching, I will show you something. There is a realms that you access from the realms of men, a, a, a human aspect of praying in the spirit. And then there's a human aspect of praying, kara, a heavenly aspect of praying in the realms of the spirit. So one side deals with the earth and another side dealt with the things of the spirit. When you are praying and you need a situation to be corrected, you need the spirit of might. You want to go. You are facing something. You need might. Might does not come from the earth. When you speak of might, angels are activated. Rakoshaka. Systems. Understanding systems of prayer. Once you understand these systems of prayer, your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, uh, and the tongues thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Everything was gold here. And look that you make them after their pattern which was shown to you in the mount. So God was always telling Moses, look at, at, at what I have told you. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Make it right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So the lampstand that is found in the most holy place not the most sorry the holy place the lampstand that is found in the holy place was made of pure gold and it represents the holy spirit and therefore in the tabernacle process of prayer the seven levels of prayer in the tabernacle and for those who are joining us for today maybe let me mention them in passing there are seven levels of prayer in the tabernacle of god number one is the altar of sacrifice or the prayer of sacrifice where you repent where you consecrate yourself in the blood of the lamb and where you dedicate yourself to god and where you fast in the second level is the labor of worship where you practice and you do prayers of thanksgiving praise and worship and now we are on the altar of the spirit the prayer of the spirit where you receive tongues where you receive ability to pray in the realms praying in the spirit gives you access to realms where you cannot access in the physical then we'll look at the table of showbread where you meditate on the word of god this is on a prayer session we then we'll look at the altar of intercession then how to wait on God and the Shekinah glory. Seven levels that can be done in seven minutes, that can be done in seven kayabadoshka hours, can be done in seven days, seven weeks, seven months, seven years. You will become very powerful in the name of Jesus Christ. This will help you to stop moving from altar to altar, trying to look for a solution. You find yourself going to pray with people who don't even understand systems of prayer. They'll pray a demon into your life. So you are safer praying, learning how to pray, working together and having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So wherever you are by the power of the Spirit of God, get ready, get ready, get ready. We are in the holy place now. The piece of furniture that was here was pure gold and it, represent, it represented praying in the Spirit. It represented holiness. Gold represented Holy Ghost, holiness. And that's why you see where, where we are reading that the design, it was, it was, it was beaten of pure gold. Okay, and there were not many other parts that were brought together to make this lampstand. It was bent, it was made, Makasho Prekidas, because the Holy Ghost is one. The Holy Ghost is one. And wherever your life is bent, the Spirit of God has ability to straighten up every crooked path inside of your life. Hallelujah. My God. So it represented the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. Exodus chapter 17 verse 6, Moses was given an instruction to strike the rock and out of the rock came out water. My God. So the beating of Moses upon the rock was the smiting of Christ on the cross 
who was the rock the rock was Christ and out of the rock came out water what is this water is the water of the spirit it represented the Holy Spirit and that's why in the labor of worship they had to wash God said put water in there and they had to wash their hands and their feet who does the power Marako of conviction to convict you it is the Holy Spirit that when you face God he reminds you says he shall bring to remembrance all things he begins to remind you of that thing that you need to leave at the prison altar as you're going to face God that way you start developing a system of prayer you start developing uh, you know you correlate your prayer life with what God said I have placed on the earth for you to access me to access you know the blessings to access the wisdom to access the glory to access the honor my God, Lake Sodesh. That's why you see now the lamp sum is being made, and it begins with the candlestick, it begins with a shaft. That shaft that you see they were talking about in verse one represented uh, a thigh. A thigh, this one for the leg. It represented a thigh because it is not until you approach God when you are broken that you can access the Spirit of God. In Hebrew, it's called Yarek. Y A R E K is called Yarek. In Genesis chapter 32, uh, um, Jacob is fighting. Karadosh be the Christ of He wrestled with God. He wrestled with the angel. And when he was about to overpower it, what happened? His thigh was touched. And the man fell. He had to be broken. You have to be broken before God. You have to be broken in order to be let loose. Oh my God. Oh my God. So for us to be broken, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. You cannot rely on prayers of the flesh. You must rely on the prayer of the Spirit. It is through this altar that you can be broken, that you can begin to access the Holy of Holies. So tonight, wherever you are, I prophesy to you through learning and through the grace of God that shall come upon your spirit tonight. You're going to learn how to access the realms. You're going to learn how to birth out new things in your life. You're going to learn how to birth out new spiritual gifts in your life. Nobody said you only have one gift. Apostle Paul was a guy who was murdering Christians. He oppressed Christians, but when he comes into the scene, he operated in all the gifts. And this is a portion that you too can have as a Christian if you understand the dimensions of prayer. So the Holy Spirit is portrayed as a lampstand in heaven. Revelations chapter 4 verse 5. Let's go back to the book of Revelations chapter 4. This is what the Bible says. It's amazing. It's amazing. Truly amazing. Chapter 4, verse 5. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. And the Bible says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. You see? So Moses is being told by God, Build something. And you shall make it with seven arms upon the candlestick. This is the lampstand. So what God was telling Moses was not something he created on earth. This was something that appeared on earth because it already existed in heaven. It already existed in the realms of the spirit. So each piece of furniture that is found in the tabernacle of God did not was not created by man. It was spoken by God. The instructions that were there. God does not create things that are already outside him. He brings forth what is already inside him. He brought out the earth from inside of him. He didn't start wondering what he would do with the darkness. He brought it out from inside of him. And that's the same process with you. You will begin to bring out what is already inside of you. You begin to bath out what is already inside of you. So you need to get down to the word of God. You need to get down to the Bible and begin to understand it. The process of salvation is understanding or acknowledging your guilt. Hearing the word of God and understanding the gospel. 
oh my god so listen the bible says and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne of god which are the seven spirits of god my god so number seven becomes the number of god and god uses it a lot in his creation even a tree when you look at a tree it has seven parts <laughs> my god revelations chapter 1 verse 4 revelations chapter 1 verse 4 what does the bible say john to the seven churches which are in asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne so when you enter into the holy place when you are in the realm of the spirit in the altar of sacred of, of, of the spirit in the prayer of the spirit you access realms that cannot be touched by demons you access realms that begin to manipulate and change systems change seasons in your life mm, 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 mm. That's why I'm saying that there are some realms that you cannot access as a man. You have to access them in the spirit. So look at this. From the seven spirits which are before the throne of God. Chapter 5 verse 6. Revelations chapter 5 verse 6. Let's look at another one. Mm. And I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes and the seven spirits of God. Seven horns denoting dominion. The dominion that you can receive. We said yesterday, read Revelation chapter 5, the same 5 verse 12. As a Christian, there are things that you must operate in and must have. Is a Christian who is living in the wholeness of God, in the fullness of God, in the glorious grace and graciousness of God. There are seven things and they are power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory and blessing found in verse 12. So here we are seeing seven horns that spoke about dominion. Oh my God. Total dominion over every demonic power. Number two, seven eyes that spoke about perfectness, pure and complete illumination. Seven eyes nothing is hidden from the father there is nothing that you'll ever do on earth that will be hidden because there are seven eyes that have perfect and pure illumination every stone will be unturned every stone that's why when we do wrong things it's just amazing because you can't hide from god adam and eve tried to hide from god Oh, Mm. and which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth so the seven spirits of God are there on the earth through who? the Holy Ghost my God so the seven the seven the lampstand in the holy place had seven lamps and always burning they were always burning for people to for, for, for the priest to be able to see they gave off light so when you are in the altar of the spirit when you are praying in the spirit the first thing that takes place is light my god because you are filled by the holy spirit that language or the utterance was given to you by the spirit that language is not yours it's a language of god there is a language by which if you speak things begin to change there is a language god spoke in genesis chapter one and he said let there be light and light appeared things begin to appear he began to create the whole world and when he rested it was all by the power of the spoken word the spoken word so in the church age now in the church age now the power is not and i repeat the power of god is not in bottles the power of god is in your tongue is in your mouth open your mouth and begin to speak out shake it up apostle peter stands and tells a man silver and gold i do not have but what I have, this I give to you. 
And this is what he proceeds and says, in the name of Jesus. He didn't produce bottles. He didn't produce water. He didn't produce materials. My father, my father. So you see, there's a dimension in which you can move. The Bible says, out of the, out of the body of uh, Apostle Paul, did come out handkerchiefs and the handkerchiefs were given to the sick that was an anointed material yes and it cast out demons but what you need to understand that the spirit of god is also upon you my god you have that ability to use something to be able to move things to be able to speak things and that is the prophetic but it is it is it is not saying that the grace and the anointing you find you know many people some could say they are genuine others are not that bottle that oil is what you put on your head to anoint yourself calling out a god you believe in the oil in the bottle you'll be wrong something could happen to you it's a way of initiating you into the occult i said it my God. So wherever you are, open your mouth. Use material. Do things when you have revelation. When you have a revelation and you have a confirmation from the Spirit of God that is inside of you and says, yes, go ahead, then go ahead. But if you can't hear from the Spirit and you're waiting for somebody else to tell you, so this is why it's important for you to start having a relationship with the holy spirit start now don't wait for tomorrow start now one day if there's a situation there's an emergency and that oil that you believe in is not there what will happen to you what will happen to you you need to learn to develop and understand that the anointing is in your tongue the oil is in your tongue you have the power and ability to face god the veil tore from the top to the bottom giving you access into the holy of holies and that's why we are traveling in prayer through the tabernacle of god this is why we are moving in that level this is why we are moving in that grace my father my father let the truth set you free that's what the bible says it's only the truth that will set you free meaning any operation in a life will entangle your life will put you in chains oh my god the moment you learn to pray in the spirit the moment you learn to move in the spirit then you're going to understand that there are demons that you will encounter that you need to overcome once you have overcome the demon of death, then you must also overcome a demon of, of, of what do you call it, blackmail, a demon of accusation. You overcome it, you move to the next level. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness, you know, rulers and wickedness in, in high places exist in the realm of the spirit and that's why when you travel in prayer you're going to contend you're going in a realm parasco, where any these things are manipulating your life manipulating your children manipulating your family you need to learn to do it that's why you have authority to lay your hand on top of your child you are the earthly appointed authority over your son or your daughter pray over their lives decree and declare the goodness of god decree success situations, decree habits, addictions, to be killed in the name of Jesus. Rakatasu. You have that authority. And that's why I'm teaching you today about the altar of, of the spirit, praying in the spirit realm, the seven spirits of God. So, the Holy Spirit is available. There's a human aspect of praying in the spirit. In the human aspect of praying in the spirit, the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, he gave them utterance, not a language, utterance. What is an utterance? They begin to stammer. So you can be stammering, a repetitive uh, a stammer. That is the human aspect of praying in the Spirit. And this is what is represented by the seven spirits of God. Stammering tongues. I spoke, they spoke in stammering tongues. Kata, 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 kata. Moses spoke 
my God. Moses told God and said, when he was being sent, he, he, he faced the Lord and he told the Lord, for I am a stammerer. And God tells him, hey, Angalia, Aaron is coming. Aaron is coming. But you see, what you need to understand, if I say, or oh, let me use a, a name that I'm seeing here, if I say, K -k 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 Kimani, you have heard me. You have heard me. You have heard me. The understanding is just delayed, but you have heard what I've said. K -k 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 Kimani, you have heard me very well. But the Bible says that Moses told God that he would not speak with Pharaoh because he was a stammerer. Now, that stammering was actually a language. You must remember, Moses was not talking to a fellow human being. Moses was talking to God. And, and in the book of Isaiah, let me show you. A book of Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 and verse 11. This is what the Bible says. For with stammering lips, and another tongue will he speak to these people mm, 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 mm. so this was a proper language and it was the lord who was speaking to these people but the lord said he will speak to them in a stammering manner he speak to them in a stammering manner so the human aspect of praying in the spirit involves stammering speaking in tongues but you can stammer ah, bah, 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 but as it is developed so there is a stammering tongue there is a pure language Mako that's not stammering that's a pure language that's a pure language and then there is groaning in the spirit so there are three things of where you can have a human aspect of praying in the spirit through stammering through a pure language and through groaning in the spirit those three then there's the heavenly aspect of praying in the spirit which is tongues of angels tongues of angels languages of angels and the language of god can i repeat them again tongues of angels languages of angels and the language of god you have a guardian angel with you hallelujah you have a guardian angel with you you have to learn how to speak to your angel. You have to learn how to communicate in the realms of the spirit. There are times when you need might, the spirit of might. A mighty angel will come. Can you imagine for the 21 days Daniel waited for his answer to come? Can you imagine? It's not recorded what he did, but in those 21 days you bet he was praying. You bet he was praying. And in the realm of the spirit, in the prince of Persia captured the angel that was carrying a solution. So there must have been a prayer this man prayed using a tongue of angels, a communication that activated angel Michael to leave the heavenly realms and come directly and rescue this angel. Now let me tell you, the book of Revelations chapter 12, it says, my God, let me show you something. This is a mystery. Revelations chapter 12, from verse 7 the bible says and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was there a place found anymore in heaven so this war did not take place in earth this this war took place in the heavens number verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels cast out with him. And then look at verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power on, of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, not their brethren, the accuser of our brethren. So it means that the people who are saying this were saints. They were living people. The, the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
Then look at verse 11. Amazing. The Bible says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now, are angels subject to the blood? That's one question you need to ask yourself. Are the angels of God subject to the blood? If they existed before the shedding of the blood. So how do they become subject to the blood? Number two, look at what the Bible says in that verse 11. Verse 11. It says, and by the word of their testimony. Angels don't have testimonies. It's human beings that have a testimony. And the Bible says, huh, and they loved not their lives, even unto the death. Angels cannot die. By now would have killed the devil. Angels do not die. They will be judged. So for this battle to take place, there were those who these angels had to overcome by the blood of the Lamb in verse 11. Meaning, for you to be able to, to, to get into the realms of the Spirit and there is a situation happening in your life. Things are going wrong. Do not wait. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Your prayer will activate verse 11. You will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. But it's not you who's going to go out with the sword with the actual sword in the realm of the spirit the angels come down the protocratic forces of, of of creation they come down but they have to be activated by your word so that they can overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony what is your testimony when we give a testimony we give a testimony of the goodness of god and we don't fear even unto death it's only human beings that can die oh my god I'm speaking to somebody tonight. So there are three levels of tongues in a believer's life. Three levels. Number one, stammering tongues. Stammering tongues. Number two, a pure language. First Corinthians. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 14. Number one, stammering tongues. Number two, a pure language. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, For he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Mm. So when you're speaking in that language, when you've been given that utterance, it means you've been given access to the Holy of Holies. You've been given access to God. You speak unto God. Shake it in prakasudesh. The third level, three levels. Number one, stammering tongues. Number two, pure language. When you speak in unknown tongues, speaking, number three, groanings in the spirit. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Listen to what the Bible says. Likewise, the spirit who helps, who also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should speak we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered so when you begin to groan in the spirit kanosh ebra he takes over he takes over it's like psalm 91 in psalm 91 the psalmist praises god so much that god is so massaged God is so touched and loved and this man has told him how he is the refuge, the almighty God, how my God. He has told him how no arrow will come at the midnight time and the noonday for God shall give angels to give you until in verse 14 God takes over. God takes over that psalm and finishes it. He inhabits the praises of the psalmist so when we are looking at this with groanings that cannot be uttered the groanings are not the groanings of men the groanings are the groanings of the spirit and that's why you need to travel prayer is traveling prayer is growing to understand we say this being what is being b i y n is a Hebrew word what is being being means to 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 construct to build to grow so there are three levels of tongues that every believer can move in stammering tongues a pure language and you get to the point where you can groan 
in the spirit and when you get to that level you can groan on behalf of your family you can groan on behalf of your business you begin to change atmospheres you begin to change you know your economic climate you begin to change your educational climate you begin to change your social climate you begin to change your cultural climate my god what you enter into this level is not about you it's about god you begin to understand that my god i stand and i am rooted in the word of god you don't get cheated on many places you don't jump from altar to altar because you are rooted and you understand you not move by yourself you move by the spirit of god am i speaking to somebody so you see we are looking at the three levels a human aspect of speaking in tongues or praying in the spirit stammering pure language and groanings now the heavenly aspect of speaking in tongues comes in the holy place hallelujah tongues of angels tongues of angels languages of heaven and we are going to look at this hallelujah my god what are the tongues of angels first corinthians 13 first corinthians 13 verse 1 marabazadosh the Bible says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. So there's evidence that there are tongues actually that are spoken that are of angels, a direct communication with angels. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And have not love. I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So the man says there are tongues of men and there are tongues of angels. So there's a, there's a human aspect of speaking in the tongues or speaking or praying in the spirit. And there's the heavenly aspect because angels, kaya, banosh, they live in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. So where you are, there are levels where you can enter, where you're going to begin to speak in tongues of angels. I'm speaking of people who are spiritually filled. Number two, the languages in heaven. There are languages in heaven. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. Let me give you an example. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Do we have time? Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. This is what the Bible says. How that he was caught up into paradise and had unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter oh my god that one just blows me away that there is a language in heaven listen this is a pastor paul he was speaking about christ he's speaking about his ministry and the thorn and he says uh, in verse 3 let's go back to verse 3 and i knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body i cannot tell so this he doesn't know exactly who what communication he had in the realms of the spirit and the bible says god knows paul said god knows and you see and i knew such a man whether in the, in the body or out of the body i do not know god is the one who knows listen and this is what the, he says in verse 4 how that he was caught up into paradise and had he heard and speak up words and speak up words which it is not lawful he uses the word lawful meaning there was no grace mm. which it is not lawful for a man to utter it was not permissible for a man to utter those words these were the languages that were found in heaven and one of them says you see a voice of a trumpet a trumpet did not have a sound a trumpet had a voice lightnings thunder voices in the realm of the spirit the bible says that this book of revelation that the the thunder and the lightnings gave an utterance so it means in the realm of the spirit it is a voice but when you hear it here on earth you hear Doo -doo 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 -doo, you hear lightning the sound of lightning if you open your ears well then probably you hear the utterance this is so prophetic there was a voice that came from what we read there a voice that came from the midst of the four living creatures 
There was also the voice of the horns at the altar of incense. Revelations. Revelations. Let me show you. Somebody might just saying, Pastor, what are you saying? Revelations chapter 9. Revelations chapter 9 verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns. Ah! I had a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So it means the horns, the four horns that spoke about dominion, had a voice and they were speaking. What were they saying? What language was that? The Bible says, Apostle Paul is telling us the things that he had, no man has permission to utter them. Then there is the language of God. That one I showed you where a man is speaking. God said he shall speak to his people in a stammering manner. So when God speaks, hallelujah, he speaks to us in a stammering manner. For you to be able to translate it, it will take the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when God speaks, it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to, to, to turn that language in a voice that you can humanly hear. So three realms of praying in the spirit, praying in the tongues of angels, praying in the tongue, in the language of heaven and in the language of God. So when he, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it means that there is a voice because he searches the deep things of God. <laughs> deep call it unto deep. Man searches the things of man, but the Holy Spirit searches the things of God. So in that language of God, it's only the Holy Spirit that can interpret it to you and change it. So the moment you pick up praying in tongues, the moment you pick up praying in tongues, there are benefits that you receive. Benefits that come into your life. Number one, you get a personal edification. Satisfaction in the realm of the Spirit. Access in the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Marabos et rekidia. Once you begin to speak in tongues, it is a sign of the presence, the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, or the indwelling presence of God in your life. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The indwelling presence of God inside of your life. When you can speak in tongues, you will pray the will of God. You will not pray things amiss because he says he groans on our behalf. So you say the right words in the realm of the spirit. When a situation arises, your fist, makato get down and begin to speak in tongues. Practice your tongues. Let it grow from 10 minutes. Let it grow. Some of you can even do 10 minutes in tongues. Let it grow from that one minute, that two minutes. Let it grow to 10 minutes. Let it grow to 30 minutes. Let it grow to one hour. Let it grow to two hours. Let it grow all the way to seven hours or even nine hours of tongues. There are levels. When you begin to speak in tongues, you're speaking unto God. So you see, when you just find somebody in the street or you meet a friend, hi, sasa, zuri, ukoaje, ukopoa, mm, okay, unenda api, oh, minenda kinyata avenue. Okay, me ni me toka mwindi Bingo Street. Nata kuelekea apa CJs. And then you say bye. Okay, so what? No, no, no. Short conversation and you are done. Short conversation. <laughs> and you are done. That's not... You see, when, when you go to the realms of the spirit, you want to converse with somebody you love. You can't speak two minutes and you are gone. Learn how to talk to God. Learn how to tell Him. Learn how to cry to Him. Learn how to move Him. The Holy Spirit stimulates your faith. He moves with your faith. I want us to look at the book before Revelation, Jude chapter 20. Jude 20. Jude, not chapter 20, but Jude 20. Jude 1 20 is only one book. This is what the Bible says. But you, beloved, it says, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm. I need to read that again. I need to read that again. And you need to hear it. You need to write that verse down. Listen. But you, 
beloved. Oh my God, I feel loved. But you, beloved, you see, who are the beloved? Those who are the saints. Those who are not under false teaching. Those who are not false prophets. Those who are not false teachers and pastors. The beloved, you, who is hearing and yearning to grow in the word of God. This is what the Bible is telling you. Building up yourselves. Not the pastor building you up. Someone's going to say, I don't like pastor. I'm a pastor myself. But we have to preach the truth. And the truth is what is going to set you free. Going to set your children free. Going to set your family free. Going to set your business life free. Going to set your career free. You have to learn how to build up yourself. That's now understanding. Being. Building up yourselves. Mm. What is this building up yourself? You're already laying a, 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 a structure on the foundation that Jesus gave you. The foundation that Jesus gave you. What is the Bible saying? In building up yourselves on your most holy faith. <laughs> and then praying in the Holy Spirit. Araka. So our praying must be exercised. You know, in, in, in the sphere of the Holy Spirit. Our praying must be motivated and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not a man. Did you hear that? Oh my God. The Holy Spirit stimulates your faith. The Holy Spirit gives you a spiritual refreshing. The Holy Spirit teaches you submission. Teaches you subjection. He is a person. And he is at the center of the tabernacle of God. Between the Holy, my God. Between the most holy place and the outer court. Where there is the present altar, he is found at the center, at the center of our bodies, our heart. That's where he speaks, at the center. He speaks to your heart. He doesn't speak to your mind, he speaks to your heart. Whatever is churned in your heart is what is translated into your mind and comes out in the form of thoughts, comes out in the form of ideas. And that's why we're saying one of the ways of approaching God, focusing on God. One of the focuses, don't allow your mind to wander. Because the devil cannot make your heart wander. The devil can only make your mind wander. Your heart has four chambers. Four is the number of the creative ability. We Very soon we are going to do a very powerful scientific teaching or biological teaching. You'll understand who you are. The realms of prayer can change your life. Praying in the spirit changes things. Changes things. Changes the atmosphere. Changes the climate of your life. You must understand that there are prayers. Imagine Isaac having a 100% tithe giving during a time of drought. What did this man do? He was a man of discipline. A man of spiritual intelligence. He must have moved in the realms. You know, so you get to a point where when even people say that, oh, there is, a, there is a problem with the economy. Things are hard. You don't say together with them things are hard. You tell them, mm, tell me more about it. Why? Because you understand that you're not operating in the economy of the earth. You're operating in the economy of God. And therefore, you access the heavenly central bank, the heavenly spiritual bank. How? Tongues. How? Praying in the spirit. God already knows all that you need. So wherever you are, by the power of the Holy Spirit, when you see the pieces of furniture turning into gold, then you have to shed off the flesh and enter into the realm of the spirit my god my god you are that tabernacle of god and you remember how the god, how god is telling moses he is using his ha <laughs> you know he's just using his his he he's not using it so you must understand that you are the temple of god you are that tabernacle that god is god created my God, my God, may the Holy Spirit awaken you and develop you, my God, and strengthen you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Oh, Rakatosh Kilebretos. May you, Maradia Mentos, be lifted. Let there be a spiritual awakening in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A spiritual awakening in your life, in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are that tabernacle of God. There is going to be a divine portal open for you tonight by the fire of the Holy Ghost. My God, Leka Sudeshka Hasadeda. You will ask a According to God's will in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that's what the Holy Spirit helps you to do the portals and the channels that are open for you are for honest prayer not only honest prayer praying in the will of God desiring a revival in your life in your financial life in the lives of your children in the lives of your family members you are desiring something through praying in the spirit you can inquire from the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In fact, at that level, now wherever we are, we, God is just speaking right now. We need to enter into a level of prayer. We need to enter into a level of prayer. And this is how it's directing me to pray before I pray for somebody who's going to receive tongues online. Mm, 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 mm. In the name of Jesus Christ. What you need to understand is that God never does anything quietly. He has to be glorified. And that's why during the time of Acts chapter 2, he had to gather people from all nations to come. There was a time of Olympics in Greece. People had to come together. So in that city, imagine now you are saying this is, this is now World Cup that is coming. Everybody is flying in so that he could show his glory. So wherever you are through the power of the Spirit, in the, just stretch your hands towards me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let portals be opened for prayer in the spirit. Wherever you are, portals are going to open now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, there's a portal opening for answered prayer. Answered prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Spirit of the Lord, you shall abide in Christ. You shall abide in Christ. You will pray in the will of the Lord. You shall call upon His name in the time of distress. Let their portals open for you. Portals open for you. For a humble nature, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be grown in the Spirit. You shall learn how to grow in the Spirit. You shall earn in prayer. Catastrophe, you shall pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the most high God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, God is gonna set you up to obey his commands to obey his commands there shall be a righteous living inside of you by the power of the holy spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ you shall return to god this is a revival you shall return to god your family shall return to god your children shall return to god in the name of jesus christ your parents shall return to god in the name of jesus let there be portals father in those homes portals in those places where they're watching me from activate a repentance father let them and lead your people jehovah by the power of your spirit my god we wait patiently for you in the name of jesus christ we are seeking you king of glory in the name of jesus christ wherever you are there's a grace that is coming to your life now receive it as it's going this is the fire of the holy spirit jumping jumping now jumping now into homes into homes into homes acts chapter 2 is the final prayer Acts chapter 2, Kaya Bados, Lake Rogladi Gededam Toteske. You are entering into the next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, my God. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. This is what the Bible says. Miranoj, Elekraduze, Masufedeskin Nelagadazo, Reko Paradi Nenebetalos, Nevedish Kahazo. Paradia. This is what the Bible says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Wow. This was the feast of Pentecost. My God. 50 days after the Passover. Amazing. The number under power 7. One day I'm going to teach numbers here. In dimensions you have never seen before. My God. My God. My God. 
Everything, did you know everything that that is ever born is calculated and there is the number of God in it? Look at the gestation periods. You will see. You will see. with a multiple of seven any gestation period anything that is born on the earth must have a multiple of seven including you including an, even a dog a gestation period for a dog is 63 days that's nine times seven is 63 days that's for another day listen Acts chapter 2 this is the, the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So wherever you are, be in one accord. My God, my God, be in one accord with the brethren. Release people. Don't harbor unforgiveness in your heart. Be in one accord with the brethren. Are you there, somebody? Are you there, somebody? This is what the Bible says. There, they were all with one in one place. Like now we are online. We are like in the upper room. For the sake of those who are going to receive tongues tonight, I know there will be testimonies. If you're here and you cannot speak in tongues. This is your time right now. This is your time. And when it comes upon you, testify on the comment section of this page. Testify. Even when your tongues change, because I see tongues changing already. I see your tongues changing, entering levels that you have never entered before. You will begin to pray. You begin to travel in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Listen, this is what the Bible says, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. The Bible says, and it sat upon each of them. This is what is taking place right now online, on this service, on this platform, on CMTV. If you're watching me on CMTV, if you're watching me on YouTube, if you're watching me on our Facebook platform, something is about to take place in your life. Your tongues are about to change in the realm of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The power of God is going to flow through you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ like has never been before. This is what happened in the upper room. It is happening right now wherever you are. The tongues, the cloven tongues of fire are over your head. And this is what the Bible says. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's work is to fill you. And when you accept him and when he comes into you, the Bible says when you accept Jesus Christ and the power of his death over the cross and the power of the blood, then you are sealed. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says you are being filled with the Holy Spirit. And listen to what part B of chapter of verse 4 says. And began to speak with other tongues. So the responsibility is yours to open your mouth and begin to utter. Because utterance has already been given to you. It says the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance meaning your responsibility is to speak out the utterance that has been given to you in the realms of faith wherever you are lift up your faith right now it's about to happen it's about to happen it's about to take place online in the name of jesus christ of nazareth wherever you are there is a great ability there is the ability of god coming over you right now if you cannot speak in tongues raise up your right hand in the name of jesus just raise up your right hand as i stretch forth 
my hand over Kasu Trekedesh online. You will receive the fire of tongues in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are watching me and you can speak in tongues, open your mouth and begin to be in one accord that we may pull them into our one accord with Christ. Matosh Epredia Legun Tanedeskahas. Shepedeganos de Predia Badas to Predia. Makato Rakato Redia Badanuza is happening right now as I stretch forth my hand over you. Lift up your right hand. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you use me tonight. I give you my body, my soul, and my spirit. Use me as I stretch forth my hand. Fill your people. Let there be the sound of your wind, the sound of the ruach. Let the cloven tongues of fire come over their heads right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Feel everyone watching me tonight by the power of your spirit. Feel them, Lord. Feel them, Lord. Feel them, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says as they were filled, they began. They began to speak in tongues. Wherever you are, receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Grace. Grace for tongues is flowing right now. Come on. Grace for tongues is flowing in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, begin to partake, begin to partake, begin to partake. Wherever you are, partake and testify in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to speak. Open your mouth. There is a portal. There is a portal already available for you in the name of Jesus. Leko prakia zonte. Receive your tongues in the name of Jesus. If you are speaking in tongues, I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. Tongues of angels, the fire of God, the presence of God. Let it fall upon you now. Let your your tongues change. Let your tongues change now. Tongues of angels, tongues of men. Rikatoza lekada zoneshka. You will be allowed to groan in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive it wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. God wants you to have this. God needs you to have this. So that you can move the dimensions. You can move your climate. You can move the sphere, your environment, wherever you are. Wherever you are, begin to practice. Even if it is a small utterance. It's an utterance, not a language. You begin to grow in it. You begin to move in understanding. Oh my God, wherever you are, may the, the eyes of your understanding begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wherever you are, the fire of the Holy Spirit is moving right next to you. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, we declare an open portal. 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 For that child of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maro de sopra ata ata ata. We have got the ability by which we call him Abba father my god and my savior jehovah my god open the truth to your people open your spirit up to your people give them and pour it oh god feed them my god quench their thirst as you quench the thirst of israel quench their thirst right now empower them my father empower them wherever they are in the name of jesus christ of nazareth in the name of Jesus Christ, your life will never be the same again. My God and my Father, let there be testimonies now. Marcos de Lepredia. If you are watching me, whether you are in CMTV, whether you are on YouTube, wherever you are, if you receive this gift, put it on the comment section. My God. Lift up your faith wherever you are. I pray for your life wherever you are. You shall be covered by the blood of the Lamb. You will remain in the hedge in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over your life the power of God. The power of God. You will operate in the functions of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. You will receive an encounter with God in anything that you're going through. In anything that you're going through in your life right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus receive the power of God in Jesus mighty name wherever you are begin to change your dimensions through prayer change your dimensions Moses did it change your dimensions Cain did the same thing change your dimensions 
oh my God, Noah did the same thing. All the men you see, many men in the Bible, they learned how to pray. They learned how to commit to God. They learned how to face God. And even their enemies knew who their God was. Oh my God. Mordecai's wife Haman's wife told him after he came from a meeting Haman's wife that if it is the God of the Jews my friend imagine your wife telling you that she knew who that God was Wherever you are, be lifted in the name of Jesus. Be lifted by the power of the Spirit of God. If you're saying, man of God, I want to stand with the kingdom through kingdom support. Our team number is 9170405. You find it on the comment section. Or our church line is 0713068737. It's going to move at the bottom of your screen and at the uh, uh, comment section on our Facebook platform and on YouTube. God bless you. God keep you tomorrow. We'll be back online, same time, same place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we'll be dealing with the table of showbread, which was the next piece of furniture in the holy place. And it was made of gold and it signified meditation on the word of God. Listen to that. When you begin to pray, you've learned how to ask for forgiveness. The altar of sacrifice to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. You have learned how to move in worship, how to move in praise, and how to move in thanksgiving. You have now learned how to enter into the realms of prayer through the power of God, through His Spirit, through the Holy Spirit that is in you. Let the power of grace be with you and activate you. In one prayer session, you will learn how to repent. In one prayer session, you will learn how to praise and worship. In one prayer session, you will learn how to speak in tongues. And in one prayer session, you will learn how to read the word of God and how to utter and meditate on the word of God. In one prayer session, you will learn how to intercede, not only for yourself, for another person. You will learn how to wait on God and how to get and see the Shekinah glory. Wherever you're watching me from, this is the Grace Christian Church International. I'm the senior pastor. My name is Philip, Pastor Philip. I thank God and I bless God for you who has been with us online. May God continue to give you grace. May God continue to keep you. If you're saying, man of God, I want to know about this God more and more. I do not know God. I need to change my life. My life needs to turn around and say this prayer with me. It's an altar call to you. It's God calling you back into the kingdom. And the Bible says, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's son, Jesus Christ. If you want to be there with me, if you want to pray tonight, follow me in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I thank God that I have seen and I acknowledge my guilt for I am a sinner and I have fallen short of the glory of God. Today I believe and I want to be changed. Father, I believe you died on the cross. You shed your blood and on the third day you rose again. I have been redeemed by the power of your blood. My sins have been washed. My sins have been cleansed. My sins have been forgiven and I decree and declare with my mouth before the realms of heaven that I am born again hallelujah hallelujah if you said that prayer with me tonight you need to get yourself a Bible Start reading that Bible. find yourself a Bible teaching church hallelujah hallelujah find yourself a Bible teaching church if you have no place to go the Grace Christian Church International is available for you we are here to teach you. We are here to walk with you. We are here to teach you not only about salvation, but how to emulate the walk and the life of Christ Jesus. Wherever you are, we are turning on lights. You're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Your lights are slowly being turned on. You're learning how to pray. Nobody will ever move you. Nothing will ever shake you. You'll enter realms and change your atmosphere change your atmosphere change your financial atmosphere change your business atmosphere change the atmosphere of your education change the atmosphere of your career change the atmosphere of your health 
with the word of prayer. Prayer is something that you can do. It changes things. And in the Bible, men used prayer to move great things and even to change the weather. Elijah did it with a prayer. He stopped the rain from coming. So there's nothing you can't access in the realms of the spirit through praying in the spirit. I love you. Once again, my name is Pastor Philip. God bless you. See you tomorrow, same time, 9 o'clock. The table of the shop, right? Shalom. You are watching Corporate Media Television.